Hello everybody, AP here from the Dope Fiends Comics and Legend of the Adorbs Amigurumi and Puppetry Studio, back again with another video tutorial on how to make this cable control armature for a high density foam hand and rod puppet. Now this puppet is going to be Wide Awake, the host of our vlog, An Ounce of Sense, and uh, I'm going to show you how to make this a little bit more sturdy. So let's get started. Wyatt's head is one of the most intricate cable control builds we've done for a hand and rod puppet and features lateral eye movement as well as blinking eyelids and a special feature for this character, the ear wiggle. When it came time to design the mechanics that would control Wyatt's facial features, I wanted to make an actually functional template. Now this pattern here does work, but it's still very fragile. So I wanted to be able to show you how to transfer this design into a finished puppet. To make the skull armature for our puppet, as well as the eye, eyelids, and ear articulation, we're going to need one 12 inch by 26 gauge by 18 inch piece of sheet metal, three four foot bicycle brake cables, three aluminum coat hangers, three ferules, two wooden balls, two five-eighths of an inch doll eyes, some floral wire, number eight, 32 by one half inch screws and nuts, one quarter inch cable clamps, and some tape. During this stage of assembly, the tools we'll need include gloves, safety goggles, metal shears, a Dremel with cutting and sanding wheels, pliers, needle nose pliers, wire cutters, a vise, five minute epoxy, a band saw, a hammer, a screwdriver, a drill or drill press, a 1 16th inch drill bit, a quarter inch drill bit, and a 1 8th inch drill bit. These are the six pieces that we will need to cut from sheet metal. This is the basic skull plate that rests above your hand in the puppet's head. These are the two uprights that support the cables and create a dome inside the foam of the puppet skull. And these two pieces insert into the back of the eyeballs and perform the lateral motion when hinged to this piece, which translates the cable's action to the eyeballs. Once we've traced the pattern onto the sheet metal, we can use the metal shears to separate all of the pieces and then trim them down. The Dremel will help to make fine cuts and smooth off some of the rough or jagged edges of the metal. Be sure to wear safety goggles and gloves when cutting metal. Remember, it's all fun and games until someone takes a splinter of metal in the eye. Then it's just fun and games that you can't see. Use the drill and 1 8 inch drill bit to drill holes in the sheet metal wherever the pattern indicates. Then use the vise and hammer to bend the sheet metal where indicated on the pattern. Once all of the pieces have been sanded smooth, we can move on to the wire components of our mechanism. Using the wire cutters, pliers, and needle nose pliers, cut the coat hangers apart and shape them. The first one needs to be about 10 inches. It has a one inch riser for the eyeball to sit and rotate upon, then about two and a half inches before a three inch crossbar and repeat the process in reverse. This will be attached under the skull plate to hold the eyes in place. The second wire piece is for the eyelid assembly. I used almost an entire coat hanger for this and made sure that the organic shape I defined was large enough to pass smoothly over the eyeballs. I also designed the eyelids to have this additional section of wire that would help to support the eyelids at both ends. This middle bar here is what translates the cable's movement into a blink. 
and it's bent at an almost 45 degree angle to facilitate that movement. The last wire piece we will need to create is for the ears. I started with about a 16 inch piece of coat hanger wire and shaped the end into these generic Spock shapes. Again, the secret to the motion is this 45 degree angle bent into the middle handle that helps facilitate the cable's movement into the wire armature. In order to prepare the eyes, we will need to drill a 1 16th inch hole one inch deep into the center of the ball. This is really critical because this will be the point around which the eye rotates. And if you are even a small amount off, the eye will not rotate correctly and lateral movement will either stick or look wonky. Next, drill a quarter inch hole into the center of the ball on a 90 degree perpendicular to the first hole. Lastly, cut a horizontal slot along the back half of your eyeball as oriented with the 1 16th inch hole facing downwards. Use a little glue if necessary and insert the doll eye as a pupil. Hint, do this step last if you want to paint the eye first. Now that all of our pieces are prepped, let's assemble them and adjust the functionality. Place the first wire assembly up through the holes indicated on the front of the skull plate and epoxy in place. Use two two inch pieces of floral wire to create a hinge for the eyelid assembly. Wrap them around the pinched pivot point in your eyelid and then feed the ends out the other side of the skull plate. Bend them apart to create a smooth and tight hinge pin. Use the number eight screws to attach the right side upright plate to the skull plate. Then attach a cable using the quarter inch cable clamps. I also used a small piece of gaffer's tape around the cable to make sure that the cable clamp held onto it securely. On the third clamp down, I also used the same hole, screw, and nut to secure a clamp for the cable on the other side or the inside, which will operate the ear mechanism. Loop the top cable around the middle bar of the eyelid assembly and then secure tightly using a ferrule. Add another piece of gaffer's tape to secure the wire loop and keep it from sliding up. Check the eyelid mechanism for smooth operation and then extend them out as far as possible to install the eyeballs. Insert the eyeball plates into the horizontal slot in the back of your eyeball and secure with glue if necessary. Then attach these two plates to the lateral motion bar and secure with two number eight 32 by one half inch screws. Place the eyeballs onto the uprights and then test the lateral motion manually and also test the movement of the eyelid again over the actual eyeballs. Once that movement has been smoothly established, attach the third cable to the skull plate using the cable clamps and then loop the wire through the hole in the lateral motion bars upright and secure with the ferrule. Test both motions for fluidity. The lateral eye cable should be installed where the zero position has the cable extended slightly so that both a right and left shift to the eyes can be achieved with either a push or pull of the cable from the other end. Now feed the ear assembly through the top hole in the left side skull upright so that the 45 degree bend is toward the rear of the puppet's head. Loop the last wire through the middle bar of the ear assembly and secure with the ferrule. Then, thread the right side skull upright over the ear assembly and secure into place using number eight screws. The cable wire should naturally catch underneath the second screw, protruding from the eyelid mechanism's cable assembly. This will help to establish the proper angle to achieve fluid motion when articulating the ears. Now, the left hand control mechanism is itself a bit tricky to build. You're going to need one 12 inch by 26 gauge by 18 inch piece of sheet metal, one one inch by 1 16th inch by six inch square aluminum tube, one three quarter inch by 1 16th inch by 10 and one quarter inches square aluminum tube, three ferrules, number eight, 32 by one half inch screws and nuts, one 
Number four by one half inch wood screw, one quarter inch cable clamps, a back brace, a one inch by three quarter inch piece of wooden dowel, one one inch by three inch by three inch piece of plywood square, a syringe, and a two inch spring. The tools needed for this part of the assembly include gloves, safety goggles, metal shears, a dremel with cutting and sanding wheels, pliers, needle nose pliers, wire cutters, a screwdriver, a hand rivet gun with rivets, a miter saw, a drill or drill press, a quarter inch drill bit, a three quarter inch drill bit, some wood glue, and a box cutter. Let's begin by assembling the mounting bracket that attaches the control arm to the belt that the puppeteer will wear. Take the plywood square and drill a three quarter inch hole into it, which will hold the one inch dowel segment. I measured an approximate 57.2 degree angle to extend the control off the hip. Glue the dowel into the plywood square and set it aside to dry. Measure the amount of cable it takes for the full range of motion on the puppet's end, and then use the miter saw to cut the one inch aluminum tubing to the correct length. Also, be sure to make a complementary 57.2 degree angle on the end of the 3 quarter inch aluminum tubing so it mounts flush with the plywood square. Drill a quarter inch pilot hole for the wood screw that will hold the control arm to the mounting bracket on the back brace. Make sure to also leave enough room when you cut the 1 inch aluminum tubing for your hand and the mounting plate for the controls. I'm going to make mine at 6 inches. Here are the patterns we will need to cut out of sheet metal in order to build the control arm for our cable control puppet. This piece serves as a cable mount and end bracket at the top of the control arm. This piece allows for the cable to be mounted flush with the front of the one inch aluminum tube, which will become our slider mechanism. And this smaller piece will serve as a control lever for the lateral eye movement. First, Cut out the 2 inch by 6 inch rectangle of sheet metal and fold it into 1 inch strips so that it wraps around the 1 inch aluminum tube and has 2 inches left to attach the cables to. Then, cut out the other two shaped pattern pieces and bend them as shown. Don't forget to drill the holes indicated by your pattern, or you'll need to use a piece of scrap wood to support your drill like I did. Be sure to use caution when you use the Dremel and sanding wheel to smooth the edges and remove any jagged spars or slivers of metal. Begin assembly by first drilling a quarter inch hole through both the extender bracket and the one inch piece of aluminum tubing where the bracket is flush with the end of the tube. Then. Use the hand riveter and quarter inch rivets to secure the two pieces together. If the rivets extend too far into the one inch tube to allow the three quarter inch tube to slide through it, sand them down slightly with the Dremel and sanding wheel until the larger tube can move smoothly over the smaller. Cut out the control lever and drill holes where indicated. Bend the bar at a 90 degree angle where it's shown by the pattern. Attach the control lever to the control slider with a number eight screw and nut. Now attach the cable that creates lateral eye movement horizontally to the extender bracket on the control slider. Measure the complete range of movement of your puppet's eyes and attach the wire base from the eye movement cable to the bottom of the control lever. Now, when you move the lever either forward or back, the puppet's eyes should shift from right to left. When you center the lever, the puppet's eyes return to center. Next, attach the end of the cable used to make your puppet blink to the header at the top of your control mechanism and the wire base to the end of the extender bracket around the control slider. 
This will make your puppet blink when the control slides back and forth. Last, we will assemble the mechanism for the ear wiggle. Start by removing the plunger from the syringe and drilling holes for the cable to pass through as they attach to the syringe. Feed the cable through the bottom of the syringe and insert the 2 inch spring into the barrel. Then feed and weave the wire end through the holes in the plunger and pull tight to your measured range of movement. Reassemble the plunger with the spring loaded barrel and test the functionality. Secure the ear wiggle cable and the syringe to the extender bracket on the control slider with quarter inch cable clamps. Sometimes the nylon cable clamps tore and would not provide enough tension, so I formed my own using a small strip of sheet metal. This also allows you to make the perfect clamp to hold the syringe. Finally, cut a small X into the back brace with the box cutter and insert the mounting bracket. Place the end of your control arm over the protruding edge of the dowel and secure with the number four by one half inch wood screw. Well that concludes the assembly for this armature for a high density foam hand and rock puppets cable control features. Make sure to test all the functions and see that they work smoothly. Thanks for watching.